This is After the Gridiron, a podcast featuring interviews with retired football players. If you're a fan of After the Gridiron, make sure you subscribe to the show to ensure that you won't miss an episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Symphonies. Symphonies is an online store that provides custom clothing and accessories. They have a number of quality products available at affordable prices. They offer custom, unique, funny, and inspirational products that you won't find anywhere else. So go to www.symphonies.ca to shop for your next purchase. And as a special offer for our listeners, enter promo code GRIDIRON to get 15% off your purchase. So there's no excuse not to check it out. Again, that's www.symphonies.ca. Symphonies. Great products, great prices. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Lyle Green, and today we have as our guest uh, Luke Mullinder. Luke played nine years in the CFL, mostly with the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, with Rider Nation. Uh, played a little bit with Montreal and Hamilton as well. He went to uh, the University of Michigan State, so he's a Spartan. And he uh, had a good career there and won a, won a couple bowl games while he's at Michigan State. And then uh, was a fourth-round pick of the uh, Rough Riders in uh, 2004, 30, 31st overall, and won a great cup in uh, 2007 with the uh, with the writers as well. So Luke, thank you for coming on and welcome to the show. Hey man, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, I appreciate you. All right, so to start off, I'd like to uh, ask the uh, ask the guest uh, to say something about themselves that most people probably wouldn't know about them. Oh, that's a wow, that's a tough one to read. Uh, most people wouldn't well, no, most people wouldn't know that uh, I've stayed in football since um, since retiring, and I'm the uh, now the color commentator for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on their uh, on their founding broadcast partner with uh, Harper Radio. Okay, so, oh, nice. Um, it's one of the ways I've, it's one of the ways I've stayed involved in football and uh, keeps me sane because my wife doesn't like sports, so oh, I don't no. talk <laughs> about sports with her. But I can talk sports with Rider Nation. Oh, there yeah. you go, nice, <laughs> nice outlet for you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, how did uh, yeah how did you get started in football? I know people get started in different uh, different times of, of their their lives. Um, when did you get started in football? Yeah, I got started late, man. It was about grade eleven, grade twelve. I think that um, you know, and, and the reason I got started was just basically to keep out of trouble until basketball season rolled around. You know, football was never my my favorite sport. I was just you know, obviously with my size and with the athletic ability I had that, uh, you know, I, I leveraged that well, but, um, yeah, man, I was just trying to stay positive for, and, and stay eligible for basketball season. Uh, that was my favorite sport. Oh, I main sport. Played, so. yeah. oh yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, I had to do something in school and football was, was something that, uh, that I was pretty good at. Although, uh, you know, I wasn't as passionate about it. As a matter of fact, I know a bunch of guys that, you know, played on our high school team and, with our OVFL team with the Mississauga Warriors that actually, you know, that they, they probably deserve scholarships and, and the football attention a lot more than I did because they were so passionate about it. And really those guys fueled me oh, really? because I wasn't as passionate about football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I, I noticed that you were born in, uh, in New Zealand, Auckland, New Zealand. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, uh, moved over to Canada when I was, uh, I was about nine and um, moved into Mississauga, it's Ontario, southern Ontario, in the greater Toronto area. Okay. And I was raised out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, did all my high school sports out there. In Ontario. Okay. Or how was it going from uh, New Zealand to to, uh, to Toronto? I'm sure the, the weather was a, a, a bit of a challenge for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, it wasn't... It was... We moved into an area where where there was a, there was quite a few people that were new to the country. I think so. I oh, think okay. that was that was good for us. But um, yeah. you know, yeah, it was, it was obviously an adjustment. To, well, we didn't have a ton of money either, right? So you know, I was wearing a lot of new clothes that were that were too big. I was never the most fashionable kid, you know, on the block. Uh, got bullied a, lot, a little bit when I was young because of things that uh, I wore and you know the accent I have. And I, yeah. so a part of me thinks that's why I lost my accent, right? To just try to fit in and be left alone. But um, yeah. 
yeah, man, uh, it's 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 definitely been worth the trip, though. Uh, I've loved it here in Canada, but I've got all my family back home in New Zealand, too. We get down there, you know, once every couple of years. We'll be going again here in this December because oh, nice. I got my uncles and aunts. And I got all my biological brothers and sisters out in Australia, too. Oh, okay. And nieces and nephews, so, yeah. Oh, nice. So you still have connections back there. Yeah. Oh, very nice. All right, so, yeah, as we mentioned uh, at the beginning, you went to to Michigan State and um you know, being uh, one of the top programs in in the states I'm guessing you were recruited by a few other teams so can you talk about the process of uh selecting Michigan State uh, for for university Yeah you know what uh, I think that uh my 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 path to college is a lot different and again I, I talked earlier about not being as committed to football is and uh to to be quite honest with you man I wasn't ready for college I wasn't ready for college football uh I picked Michigan State because it was only about four and a half hours from home. Yeah. Um, you know, met uh, met a bunch of guys there during you know the recruiting process and stuff. They had a they had a cat who became one of my very best friends over the years, Mike Labinjo, who's now passed oh, yeah. away. Rest in peace. Um, yeah. You know, he was out there when uh, when uh, when I was being recruited, and uh, yeah, man, I picked Michigan State because it was a fun school. I thought that uh, you know what football was going to be great but I, I thought that i'd really like the campus and, and the things that went on in east lansing and uh you know i i i probably you know if i did it again i would i have gone to michigan state yeah maybe but uh man yeah i wasn't ready for it man i wasn't ready for the commitment that it was going to be to be a student athlete you know and it took yeah. me a, a couple years to adjust to that right and i think that and you know i'm also from an era man where you know I mean, I was the number four ranked player coming out of Canada, I think. Um, I had some great guys ahead of me, not McKay Lauscher, who did some great oh, things yeah. at Alabama, and Lane Kassama, who, who played at the University of Michigan. Those guys were ahead of me, you know, and, and they were a little bit more committed. They, they, they were kind of prepared, but, you know, like, Canada didn't take NCAA football as serious it, uh, back then, you know. It was pretty cool that you'd go down there. It was very rare that Canadian kids got scholarships now, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. I feel now, you know. I feel in Canada now we, we've come so far and we've really prepared these grassroots football players to get these university scholarships now and they go down there way more prepared than I ever was. So yeah. it was a, it was a learning process for me, but man, did I ever have fun learning? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah the first few, first uh, first bit yeah. of time there must have been a little bit of an adjustment for you. It was, man. You know what? And, and again, you know, Americans look at that sport as, as their life, you know, and, and I was a kid that, you know, just, hey, I just wanted to party, just wanted to hang out, you know, and football was something I was going to do as well. And it was cool being a student athlete. But yeah, I mean, it cost me playing time, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, I just wasn't ready for the grind, man. And yeah. uh, I looked at myself as being fortunate enough to actually get my mind right um, in time to even, you know, be considered uh, for for a professional shot in football, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making that adjustment mm. to to university at that, that level from a from a Cana- for a Canadian is a kind of a big jump. So, being being a yeah, young, especially back then. Man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, mm. yeah. Football wasn't uh, as big a as big as it is now, and it's and for a, yeah. a young Canadian kid to to go to a big school like Michigan State, I'm sure it was a a bit of a an eye opener for you once you got down there and how much they how passionate they are about it and how much they they love it like yeah. like we love hockey up here. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, but you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world because now I feel like you know I'm a Spartan for life, man. And uh, I'm so glad that I did a lot of growing up there, and I'm I'm glad it opened my eyes, man. Because I I, know, I also think back and I say, well, man, if I hadn't had that experience, you know, what would I have turned out to be like after college? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Who knows? Because my mind wasn't right. I, you know, I had to grow up to adapt there in Michigan State, man. So it was good. And I'm, I'm glad I, I experienced everything I did. Yeah, it definitely forced you to to grow up and to mature and to you know, see what's uh, mm-hmm. what's important, what needs to be done as a as a young man. It's uh, something that uh, yeah. yeah you learn as you go along for sure. Yeah. All right. So you went to Michigan State. Did you did you take any other visits while? Um, to other schools or was it just uh oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah i i went to uh yeah, was, was considering Rutgers for a while because i always wanted to be around the new york area i was in notre dame um let's see uh bowling green was one because uh, there's a couple canadians going to bowling green at the time yeah um i was talking seriously with uh with michigan you know the big 10 schools obviously right what about um, toledo man you gotta you, yeah, you go to toledo 
<laughs> no, I never went to Toledo, man, to tell you the truth. And, and, and you know what? I was kind of upset I didn't, man, because uh, a couple of my buddies, I don't think they ever went to Toledo, but they were being recruited by Toledo. And I was like, man, how come Toledo doesn't want me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, oh, man, uh, trust me, I know all about Toledo. <laughs> yeah, we love Toledo uh, there, you know, man, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's why I was so I was so hurt. I, I was I was kind of hurt about it, man. I come they, they want all these Canadians, and uh, I'm not one. No, well, yeah, <laughs> they probably knew they didn't have a chance, so they just said, you know what? He's yeah, he's got some big schools. Yeah, he got some big schools. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so yeah, talk about your time at Michigan State after uh, you know, the, the initial. Uh, Adjustments, uh, the things uh, I'm sure turned around and got better. And you guys, as we mentioned earlier, won a couple of bowl games. So talk about your your experience there and and the your experience with your teammates and coaches at Michigan State, that program there. Yeah, you know when I committed to Michigan State, they were on the up and up, man. They had just won the Citrus Bowl under Nick Saban, and um, you know Coach Saban eventually left there um, after that bowl game was done. Yeah, and you know a lot of us, uh, you know kept our commitments to uh coach bobby williams yeah um we felt like you know, and, and coach williams kept a really good class i mean man i i got i got the privilege to play with the best football player i've ever seen college or pro in charles rogers you know and it never oh, panned yeah, out for me in the NFL. Yeah. Life, I mean, man that guy was literally the best all-around football player you'll ever see in your life yeah it, it was amazing some of the things that he was capable of right so we had a great recruiting class and but man honestly we never got it done man i think that you know our class probably uh uh, our class probably, you know, didn't live up to the the expectation that we uh, that we had coming in, yeah. um, and uh, you know, uh, shoot, I was, I mean, I'm part of that. You know what I mean? I contributed to that. We we were, we were a class that, you know, really liked the party. Uh, man, we were turning the university on its head, you know, and <laughs> and yeah, with you know, I mean, it takes it takes a certain type of coach, and you know, I, I love Bobby Williams, man. I, he was like a father figure to us, but that was the problem. I think that he wasn't a coach; he was a father figure, you know. And yeah. and we didn't get the uh, results on the field that uh, that we wanted. So we went to the uh, we went to the Silicon Valley Bowl my freshman year, and then uh, we were we didn't go to a bowl the, for the next two years. And then uh, in my senior year, they they made a head coaching change. John L. Smith came in from he had been at Louisville previously, yeah, and. Um, you know, and uh, he really got us right, man. He was a coach, you know, and uh, I think that, you know, um, yeah, we just we just underperformed, man. It was and, and and it was on us because you know what? Like we had the best coaches there. Well, there's no excuse. Bobby Williams was a father figure. He's a great guy, yeah. but you know we we had Ken Manning over there, man, and, and Coach Manning. I still live off some of the examples and some of the things that Coach Manning taught us. He's our strength and conditioning coach there. Oh yeah. You know, I follow him on Twitter, like man, and you know that's how it usually ends up being, right? You strike up the, the relationship with your strength coach because he's the guy around the program year round, All the right? Time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's the only thing, man. Like, we, we were so talented. We really feel like some of us felt like, man, you know, we, we just didn't do we didn't do what our class was expected to do, despite having some re- some guys that were really backing us. You know, like Coach Manny is one of those men, those men in our life that you know just taught us so much, man, and yeah. he, he wanted so much better for us. So now, you know while we're outside of the program, whether we're donating to the program, following it as Spartan dogs, you know, it's, it, it's nice to, 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 to see coach Manny there and, and see the success coach D'Antonio's had yeah. and, you know, just know that you are a part of something cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, um, that's the thing about, uh, Michigan state. It, it's, it's I, mean, I, yeah, I have so many great memories of it and I'm so proud to be a Spartan. You know what I mean? And, uh, it's just uh, unfortunately we just we felt like at the end of the day, man, we, we could have done a lot more on the field. Yeah, there from uh, from a success standpoint. Like and it. you know, I mean, we've been to Rose Bowls ever since. We've been to you know, we've we've been in like top five pictures. Like man, the, the success under Coach D'Antonio it was started by Coach John L. Smith. Like yeah. man, that's awesome to see our university really balling like that. Yeah, I'm sure it's a it's, you're, you look back with pride, uh, knowing how how well they're doing and how. Uh, how high they're achieving right now, and you know, you must be a little, a little disappointed with uh, with uh, your class there and kind of underachieving and not uh, reaching the. Well, it's not, you know, you're not disappointed, right? Because no, it is yeah. what it is. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you play pro ball, you play pro ball for so long that you know it's just, yeah, man. Like you, you would have liked it, but you know, disappointing is is a tough word because we still, I think that we we grew a lot, man. Like you know, I I got guys that 
I'm going to be friends for life with there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I saw, I see my, I saw my roommate last year, you know, in Chicago, we, we connected for the first time in, in a, a long, long time, probably since university. And, and honestly, we, we picked up right where we Just left really off, man. It was yeah. like, we had never, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, like, yeah, the results weren't there as, as you know, the, as we were, we were expected, but man, did, did we ever establish some relationships there that uh, that are that are really special, man? And uh, you know, now that you're on the outside of the game, you know, I, I, you probably feel the same way, man. Just regardless of if you got along with your teammates or you didn't in college, even in the pros, actually, you, yeah. you just want to see your guys succeeding in life overall, now, You know? Yeah, exactly. It's like family. You just become family, and you want you want your yeah, family to do well. Man. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. All right. So you went from. Uh... The one green to to another green, going to the, the Rough Riders. So, I'll talk about. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a dream at first, line. No. Nope. <laughs> Let's put it that way. No, I'll tell you, that wasn't you know, your first I'll pick to go to Saskatchewan. <laughs> Listen to this. So you like this. So we, uh, I, I had an agent, and the only reason I got an agent is because I wasn't going to sit here and put together a huge highlight tape. You know what I mean? I wasn't yeah. going to send a lot of film out. I just figured like, Hey man, I'll let the guy do the talking for me. If it happens, it happens. So yeah. I had a guy out of Northwestern. He was just breaking into the business. So I went to the CFL combine again. I wasn't a guy that was going to have a lot of film. So me and him just sort of said like, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to go to the CFL combine and kill it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, perfect. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll go pick out the best offensive linemen and I'll go up against them and I'll beat them in one on one. So that's what I'll do. Yeah. All right, that'll get me drafted. You know, let the film do so let, let, let the film do whatever it wants. But let me go up there physically because I originally wasn't going to go. I was just going to let him draft. Oh, really? Whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I went up there and I had a really good combine. Um, you know, in the one-on-one drills and and you know the physical stuff, right? So, yeah. um, so you know, I, I left left the combine saying, okay, yeah, you know, I feel like uh, I'm going to be a, a you know high high Hot draft pick, pick here. Yeah. You know, because I went up there and showed out, right? Uh, I knew that Elaine and uh, and um, not McKay Chief, yeah, Chief. was going to go before me, but I figured like other than those two, I was the best yeah, defensive lineman out there. Yeah, yeah, I was, and I you know, and uh, again, this was way back then. I had zero respect for any of the CIS um, O linemen or or D linemen right. that were in the draft. So I just figured like, man, Michigan State that pedigree is going to speak for itself. Yeah, exactly. So. The draft day comes along, you know, and I'm doing a paper in our study hall. I got trying to graduate, you know, and uh, working on a paper. And I look down at my cell phone's vibrating, and uh, it's my it's, it's Terrence, the, the agent, agent at the time. He goes, "Hey man, uh, hey, I just want to say uh, congratulations. You've been drafted in the Canadian football." Now I should stop you. So prior to that, like when I was tell- talking to Terrence, I, I'm an Ontario kid. I'm a Toronto kid, right? Yeah. So my whole deal was like, look, I just don't want to play in Saskatchewan. Yeah. <laughs> I was the <laughs> same like, way, man. I was the same thing. Yeah. Just, just don't, I just don't want to play in Saskatchewan. I don't care what you do, Terrence. Just don't don't let me play in Saskatchewan. Because yeah. I, I, had, I had been to the cold out of Saskatchewan. I knew there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I knew what type of city it was. I was Toronto, man. You know, in, in Toronto, exactly. in yeah. Ontario, you know, you think the world revolves around. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> So it was funny. So I'm so I'm sitting there, and Terrence is like, "Congratulations, man! You got picked. You're 32nd overall. This is the team's really excited to to, to get a hold of you, and they think you they can really you can really help them." I'm like, "Oh, sweet, man!" So so, so who's after me? And right away, there's a pause, and he goes, "Yeah, man. You know, they they think that you know you're the guy that can can provide them a lot of athleticism, especially in the middle, help them push the pocket." Yeah. And I'm like, "Okay, cool. So uh, who drafted team me? is it?" <laughs> He's like, "And you know what? And and I think you'll really like the coach and the GM, man. They're they're, they're down to earth guys." And I'm like, and I stop him. I'm like, "Dog, <laughs> like you're avoiding my question. Who did I get drafted by?" And he's like, he pauses again in the long pause and goes. Saskatchewan, but they're up and coming, and he immediately <laughs> started trying to sell me on the program. It was hilarious, man. And, oh, man. Uh, so I actually, yeah, so I actually didn't even honestly, man. I, I was I was so against the so against the the whole thought process of Saskatchewan at that time. In my young age, I uh, it's funny, like up until literally like a day before training camp, I didn't even know if I was going to turn up. Oh wow, <laughs> like, that was my that was like, man. I don't know if I can do it. I'll tell it on my friends back home. Oh yeah. man, bro, I'm going so far. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was and and you know what, man? Hey, eight years later, uh, great cup later, and and now where are we doing this interview? You're we're doing there. it uh, from my office. <laughs> for, if we're doing it from my Canadian Red Cross office in Saskatchewan. Yeah, so it's yeah. funny how things work. Now. That's funny, man. Yeah. That's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> 
so yeah, I ended up in Saskatchewan uh, initially, initially not so happy, but uh, turned out to be a, a, a good move for you and uh, ended up winning a oh, great yeah. cup. Yeah, ended up winning a great cup in uh, in 07. Uh, it's tough tough for me to talk about that that one, but uh, <laughs> as a VC, yeah, 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 yeah. former Lion, yeah. but uh, yeah, talk about your experience winning, yeah. the, winning the great cup in, in 07. You know, it was fantastic because, uh, again, uh, I was a kid that needed to mature. Um, when I got drafted in 2004, I didn't know if I wanted to play football. Uh, my dad talked me into it. He's like, you know, because my dad was quite the athlete back home in New Zealand. You know, he, okay. he was a guy that was in the, uh, the all black uh, developmentals program. And he had left without actually trying to go as far as he could. And he told me that story. He's like, you know, I regret not pursuing it further. He's like, and I don't ever want you to regret you know, not at least trying pro playing pro fo- football. Yeah. He's like, so you had a chance. To be a you had a chance to play in Aussie Aussie Reels football. No, no, no. Uh, I never played rugby. We we played a little bit, no, when I was dad, young, I but meant. I never developed. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man. He was a really good rugby player. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, he, he could have been an All Black. You know. Yeah. And uh, so, um, so yeah, he talked me into it, man. And it was funny because the first, even the first, you know, couple years. Even the first couple of years in Saskatchewan, I still wasn't taking football seriously, you know, because I was, I was a little bit of a hustler, you know, and, and me and uh, my buddy T, you know, my best friend back home, we, you know, we were making some money selling clothes and, you know, uh, we were to wholesale businesses and stuff like that. So, you know, I had a little hustle, man. I had a little retail hustle and I like doing other things, right? So, yeah. man, for my first two years in Saskatchewan, man, I was, I was really just not really doing it. And, you know, what the, the Grey Cup in 2007, like for me, it was special because that was the year I first started taking it really, really serious. Yeah. You know, yeah. I started locking in, working out, you know what I mean? During, you know, working out during the off season, like hard, hard working out during the season hard, you know, like, you know, looking started to hang out with, with the successful guys more than, you know, hanging out with just the guys that were going to be there for a year or two, you know, like yeah. I had the very fortunate um, like, man, like, I was so fortunate to have great veterans around our team at the time that, you know, some of them, you know, took me under, I remember, you know, hanging out with Scott Schultz and just sort of, you know, he was the guy that was from Saskatchewan, but man, he had, he had the future figured out, you know what I mean? And, yeah, uh, yeah. I figured, man, I needed to, I needed to be more like the Eddie Davises, more like the Gene Mikowskis and less like the guys that I, you know, that I, guys that I was, I was hanging with. And that wasn't a bad thing because I loved those guys, but I started realizing like, man, if, if, if we're going to win, I'm gonna, I got to take this seriously. You know, yeah. I got to be a part of the program. So yeah. that was, that year was fantastic though, man. We loved each other so much, man. And, and Coach Austin came in here. We had a new GM, Eric Tillman. Um, Coach Austin came on and, and really, really did a great job motivating us. You know, um, Saskatchewan, it's, it's such a, it's such a different market here. You know, it's so football, football heavy, football you know, like they yeah. did everything. Yeah. You know, everything was about the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and, you know, the media, man, there's like, it's 24 seven riders nonstop. And Coach Austin did a great job of, you know, sort of flipping any media narratives about us, telling us to stay out of the media, but also using the media to motivate us. It was, it was hilarious that uh, he would literally be like, yeah, don't read the papers. And then he'd bring like a paper article into practice the next day. Saying, Look at this. <laughs> they don't think he's going to be anything. You know what I mean? And, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that whole year, man, it was a wave, man. We, we, uh, yeah, it just, we were a deep team. Uh, we had Kerry Joseph and, you know, it was one of the coaching victories too, because I know you had Kerry Joseph on the uh, on his podcast, but it was his yeah. best year in 2007 too, man. And and to tell you the truth, if I if like this isn't a shot at Kerry, he was the best lead, one of the best leaders I've ever been around. Yeah. You know, like hands down, one of the best locker room guys. But if you ask, you know, anybody was he the best quarterback? The answer is no. Yeah. You know, but he did such a great job of being an amazing leader in the locker room. And he did such a great job of taking the coaching that Coach Austin gave him that it really gave us a shot. You know, and Coach Austin made the game simple for Kerry, I think. Yeah. You know, it was like, uh, if, you, if you don't see your first two reads run, you know, it wasn't like, yeah, you got to go to the third and fourth guys. You know, like, it wasn't like that. So that year was amazing, man. It was a wave. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm excited. One day we'll celebrate the 20 year anniversary. And we'll, Again, it'll, we'll probably get the guys together for poker. That was one of the things, you know, we really felt, especially going against you guys, Lyle, in that Western final in BC. We knew we were up against such a, a mountain of adversity. But you know what? We really felt like, hey, man, like they're they're coming into this game as a good team, but uh, we're coming into this game as a family. And I think that's where we sort of looked at it and how we felt about, you know, that run in 20, uh, 2007. 2007. Yeah. 
Yeah, he definitely uh, bonded together at the right time and uh, yeah, took us out and yeah. then went on to yeah, beat Winnipeg in the in the Greek Cup. So that was yeah, definitely a great yeah. year for you. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody's always crying about, you know, oh, well, if Kevin Glenn was was, good, was the quarterback there, you know, you guys wouldn't have had a shot. And I always felt like we had a better shot against Kevin Glenn than we did about Ryan Dinwiddie, uh, against Ryan Dinwiddie. Even though he threw three picks, I always said to myself, like, man, like, we weren't prepared for Winnipeg with Ryan Dinwiddie. We knew what we were up against with, with Kevin Glenn as the quarterback. Yeah. We knew that ball was going to come out quick, you know. But with Ryan Dinwiddie, like, we were sort of going into that great couple with a little bit of unknown. I, You know, and that's not a – you know, if you know what you've got ahead in, in front of you, right? Like, you can prepare for that. Like, there was there was no real preparing for a guy like Ryan Dinwiddie. Fortunately, it worked out for us, man. And he, he just decided on that day to throw it to the green guys instead of, instead of his guys. Instead of his guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, when you have a, yeah injury like that, and, yeah, like you said, it's easier to prepare for, for a guy that you know what's gonna what's coming. But uh, with, with Ryan in there, you, there's – a lot of unknown and a lot of, uh, I'm sure a lot of different scenarios that you had to go over in practice, which made practice a little more, more longer and, di- and more difficult. So yeah, this definitely wasn't yeah. the, the easiest preparation for that one, but, uh, it all worked out. For I'm you telling you, man, you know what? And that's what, that was that year in a nutshell, man. I'm, I'm serious. Like a lot of guys in 2007 committed to being professional athletes. And I think that, you know, before I'd gotten there, um, you know, guys were just, guys were pros, right. But like, there wasn't as many of them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I got there, guys like Andrew Green really took me in another wing and kept me in the league. Because again, like if you're not committed as a professional, I don't, you're not you're not going to make you're it, right? Like, yeah. In all reality, my first year, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have made it past year three. I just wasn't that committed, right? But I, I the one thing I was smart enough to do was to listen to the guys who, who had been there, right? Like Andrew Green, Nate Davis. You know, I used to watch Eddie Macau- Eddie uh, Eddie Davis and Gene Mikowski, You know, and just sort of mimic what they did. Yeah. Even though I wasn't serious about it, I figured, okay, well, you know what? At least if I if I get around these guys enough, you know, it'll it'll, it'll keep me to the, to the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to, I'll, I'll be I'll still be in control of my destiny. You know what I mean? Like that's the one thing you always want to do. Right? You want to walk away and you want to make any decisions you make playing pro sports. You want to be have those be your decisions, right? Because yeah. so many of us have the decision made for us. So, yeah, yeah, I count myself fortunate as a guy that you know has made the decisions for him all the way through. Yeah, yeah, that's great. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, your transition. That you went to uh, Montreal and Hamilton uh, after your time in Saskatchewan, but uh, there wasn't once uh, much time there with uh, with those teams. So, well, near the end of your career, were you were you kind of thinking of uh, what you want to do after oh, after man, football? I- I was I was I was thinking of retiring for three years. Oh, after really? My six year old. Six. Oh, yeah, man. I, I was always in the back of my mind, man. I I just felt like I wanted to do other things, you know. And uh, and I was going to work out hard. I wasn't going to be I was going to be a distraction. Like I was going to work out and I was going to come prepared every single year. But at the same time, like you know, I, I was thinking about you know calling it a day. Yeah. I was really fortunate to spend uh, uh, my last year in Montreal. It's just an amazing city and it was really like a, a different culture, you know? So I felt like I was fortunate because I sort of had that year where, you know, you knew your, your pro career was winding down and you were okay with it. So, you know, it was just enjoyable. It made every day going to work nice because, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't that old guy who was just trying to keep ahead of everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just sitting in the locker room having good conversations with the young guys. You know what I mean? None of them were my enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, man, it was just a nice, it was, it was a nice vet year. You a know what year, I mean? Yeah. It was, it was a vet year. Yeah, man. And you know how that is. Everybody needs one. Yeah, yeah. I learned that off my boy Tim Fleiser, man, who came to us in 20, 2007, 2007, man. He had a vet year. And it just looked like he was having so much fun with us. He was along for the ride, you know? So oh, yeah. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to end my career there, yeah, man. But uh, again, I was. I also kept in the back of my mind a bunch of the guys that I that I that I grew up around or came up around or coached were, were coaching me that, you know, were walking funny and were having all sorts of health problems. I was like, man, I still got my knees, I still got my brain. Like, man, like, yeah, let's get Some out of here. Health, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get yeah. out, get while they're still good. So that's when I started transitioning, man, and uh, that's what that's what sort of led me to stay in, in Saskatchewan, man. I, I felt like. You know, I I had made some plays. I I had a reputation. I you know that was a good one in Saskatchewan. You know, yeah. a lot of people knew my name. A lot of people you know uh, liked me. Uh, I had support of a fan base, and and you know one of the things I wanted to do is is I just wanted to make sure that hey, like there were some opportunities in Saskatchewan, and you know since since this was the place that I, that I did a lot of growing up in, well, this is the place that I should start giving back in first. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Like, uh, so yeah, I just, uh, figured that I'd figure things out. If I, if I stuck around, me and the wife got married here. Um, we've got two kids now and things are good, man. Nice. That's nice. All right. So how did you get uh, involved with, uh, with the, uh, your position now with the, with the riders? How'd that come about? Yeah. So, you know what? It's interesting, right? Like again, uh, tried to find some opportunity. Um, when I first got out of the game, and this was sort of the transition point, it, it actually wasn't a very good transition for me, man. I'm going to be honest with you. And the reason why is because, um, you know, when I got out of the game at first, I just wanted my paychecks to match what I was getting in football. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I started. <laughs> yeah, no, you're exactly right. You know, and I, so I said to myself, okay, well, you know, who do I know that's making good paychecks? I'm, I'm doing Scott Schultz. Mike McCullough was doing good, even though he's still playing. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start selling insurance. That's the quickest way. Yeah. So I opened a financial practice under Sun Life as a financial advisor selling insurance products and investment products. And, uh, you know what, for a year or so I was really good at it. Yeah. But also, man, it just, you know what, I, there was always, I just, I, I didn't enjoy being a shark, you know? Yeah. I, I started realizing, that, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I couldn't meet my, my ex teammates and stuff for a beer, for a lunch, you know, without thinking about product and how to curve a conversation. You know what I mean? I didn't like yeah. that part of it, man. I just wanted to go kick it with my boys, man. Make it like a locker room for the hour we were together, you know? And I didn't want to start talking about, you know, protecting your Business investments and, and yeah, blah, 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 you know? Something. Yeah. yeah, man, it just wasn't me, man. It just wasn't me, man. And uh, and so that was an opportunity, again, though, that I wouldn't have gotten if I hadn't stayed in Saskatchewan, right? So uh, so what I did is um, I had always been an ambassador for the Red Cross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I decided in 2013, I think it was, to uh, to walk out, man. I was, I was like, you know what? I'm going to the nonprofit world. Uh, there's not going to be as much money in there, but I'm going to be happy in there because I know I'm going to be, man, I'm going to be helping people, you know. And the Canadian Red Cross is, is something I really believed in at the time, and uh, so I, you know, I had a really good relationship with the vice president, and I walked in there and I said, hey, man, you know what? Like, I want to be a part of this. I want to, uh, you know, we had some goals. We had some programs we were building while I was an ambassador as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. We, you know, cause I started out with them doing bully prevention, um, presentations in the off season. Yeah. So yeah, man, I walked in there and she's like, let's do it. Let's roll. And, uh, you know, since then five, six years later, uh, I now lead our, uh, our philanthropy team here in Saskatchewan. I'm on our national corporate partnerships team. Oh, nice. Um, and, uh, you know, we're really, we're really doing some great work in the communities, man. We're, we're helping the most vulnerable people out there. You know, we're getting people through disasters. We're, we're getting people, uh, students into to the, to the healthy youth relationship space and helping them deal with all the, the mental anguish that comes along with being a kid these days, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and, and the nice thing, and that was the thing, man, like that transition period, like, it never dawned on me that football had been my passion. Yeah. No matter how much I wanted to think about something else, no matter who I you know, I talk about not being prepared for college, and I talk about not being sure if I was a pro or not. But at the same time, like, man, it's all I did since I was a kid, and I never thought about that, you yeah. know? And when people get outside of the game, I think this is where the struggle hits. They have to find a new passion, and that's so hard because your passion, whether you like it or not, has been football. It's been working out. It's been the locker room. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, money's great. Money's money's awesome. Yeah, great. You made money playing a sport. Great. What you really were passionate about was being around the dudes, being in the locker room. You know, being physically active. And I, I think that you know, man. I honestly, I, for a minute, I hit rock bottom, man, as a financial advisor. Yeah. Like, you know, things weren't helping for me, man. Our family wasn't good, you know, I, and, and it was all, and I didn't know why, you know, I knew that I, and I couldn't understand, like, wait a second, I wanted to leave the game. Yeah. I still don't want to go back to the game. So why am I miserable? Why am I making my family miserable? And then, you know, it took a conversation or two, like around, like Luke, like you have to find something you're passionate about. That's the only way you're going to transition out of this game. To, uh, well, is if you find something you can get passionate about. And I didn't think about that. So it's nice, man, because I'm really passionate about the Canadian Red Cross. And one of the other things it did is, is it opened the opportunity to get into radio and media and, and start talking about football again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I, cause I think I made the mistake of just, you know, washing football away, you know, not wanting to have anything to do with it, you know, making a few player appearances as an alumni, maybe here and there, get some checks. But, like, I tried to wash football away, and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. You know, so now that I'm back in the media side of things, you know, thankfully I do – two radio shows a week with the sports cage at, on Harvard broadcasting. And, you know, I, I walked into the rider office and, you know, we riderville.com at the time was, was something that they were trying to grow. And, 
you know, I really felt like if we, we put some, some content up on Ryderville.com that none of the other league has been doing, we could get ahead. And man, we've got some really cool stuff going on in Ryderville.com and right now, you know, and, and the Saskatchewan Rough Rider media team, like, guys like Matt Lowry, Mike Orthner, you know, with the leadership of guys like Ryan Pollock, like we really believe that we're putting some good digital content out there for CFL fans, not just Ryder fans, you know? So it allowed me to go and get passionate about football again, but not in the physical way, man. And so now I'm sitting here and yeah, honestly, bro, I, I love, I love what I do. You know what I mean? Because I'm helping people with the Canadian Red Cross and I'm still talking sports. Awesome. I feel like I'm winning. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, but it took a while, man. It wasn't easy coming out of the game though, man. It took a while. Yeah. It can definitely be a, a difficult transition. And as you, as you mentioned, to finding that passion, you know, we've spent all that time in football yeah. and, and, and all the passion and all your work and hard effort goes into that. And when it stops, you kind of have to find yourself and, and see, you know, what's, what's important to you and what's, yeah. what's your passion. So yeah, some guys, you, you're absolutely right. Man. Yeah. And you, and you don't think about it. I never thought about it, man. Honestly, yeah. I didn't, I didn't think about how, you know, how I actually really like doing it. as much as I said, I didn't like doing it. as much as I said, I didn't care for it. I really loved it. Yeah. And I didn't think about it. It took, it took, it took a while and I took some, you know, some, I had to admit it to myself, like Luke, you loved playing football. Stop trying to kid yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was literally the first play, you know, that was literally the first, the first step in actually getting through some of the struggles that I was, you know what I mean? That I was, that I was hitting. Cause there were, man, like it was, man, I mentally, man, I, I checked out, you know, checked out on my family, checked out on, on myself really. And it was because I just didn't have anything I was passionate about. I was going through emotions. Yeah. So nowadays, man, it's, it's nice because I wake up and I'm, there's not one minute of the day I, I'm, I'm not doing something that's pretty cool. That, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah, that you, you found that passion. You found that thing that you love. And yeah, a lot of guys, when they leave, they might chase, you know, chase the chase the money or something that just pays well. But uh, like you said, the passion isn't there. It's it's hard to do and you, you kind of yeah. still feel empty and, and unfulfilled. But, uh, yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Yeah. You know, the, I mean, because we see the success stories, you know? And you see the guys that were making all the money that, you know, you know, that, that have the investments, like all you hear about is the success stories, but man, like the majority of the guys, they just leave the game and in a bind, you yeah. know? And now that I sit here, like, man, the, one of the, the best things about me being on this side and still being in football is I feel like, you know, I get to help some of these guys who are in the right organization now, if they need it. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I got relationships with guys and if that, you know, we, you help them, in, you know, find jobs. You know, I go to lunches with these guys whenever they're in the off season, and you know, talk about just sort of you know ideas they have in their head, and and maybe some people they need to talk to in terms of getting you know their next steps outside of the game, right? Like you're in a position to then help. You know what I mean? And yeah. and again, Saskatchewan embraces football, embraces their their guys so much. Like man, there's going to be opportunities for these guys after they're playing. But they just have to realize that, you know what, they're going to have to, A, admit that it's no longer about them. And B, you know, they're going to have to, 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 to come to the reality of, hey, like, okay, this is, if this is the next step, I have to like this next step. You know what I mean? And for every guy like, you know, Scott Schultz, who's, who's doing so well for himself, man, like there's guys that are doing, there's, there's a lot of other guys that are struggling, you know, and, yeah. and I feel, I feel bad, man, because I feel like I don't help them enough, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like I want to reach out to my teammates that were struggling, that are struggling now more than I do, you know. And it's just, but again, you don't have time. Then you got to look at yourself and be like, well, I got a family, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's so where much. my attention. Yeah, yeah, you know. But uh, you just, you just hope that those guys find it, man. You, you sit there and you pray for them. You just be like, man, I hope, I hope you find the right way. Because reality is, Lyle, you know how it is, man. We weren't making as much money as we thought we were making. You know what I mean? Yeah, now exactly. that we're outside of the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you could have been a six figure guy. And yeah, like, man, the NFL money is NFL money. It's That's the only money to level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. All right. So, yeah, let's uh, finish off with uh, what they call the top of the mountain moment. Just looking back on your on your career and your journey through football and, and everything you've gone through to, to get to where you are now. Is there uh, uh, any words of wisdom? You've kind of mentioned some uh, just now, but uh, any other words of wisdom or favorite memory or anything else? And if, anything else you want to share about uh, about your football journey? Honestly, I think that I can't remember who told me this, man. There's two things that I, that I kind of sit on. It's, um, it's uh, football needed you a lot more than you needed it. 
right yeah. i think that, i think that people need to understand that like man and it's and and football doesn't tell you that when you're in it you know what i mean football yeah. acts like you know especially the business of support you, you you come up thinking that you know you really need football like you don't you know so and that's what sticks in front of me in my mind is is, is football needs you a lot more than you need it and you know what? Uh, from my, from my my favorite D line coach, I only played him for for one year. His name was Mike St. Clair, Montreal. Mm -hmm. The words he talked about always stick in my head. It's um, you know, memories are a, a home that you build to live in once you're older. You know, and uh, and I'm telling you, man, the guys who are in it now just cherish every single bit of this because he, Mike St. Clair, is right. You know, it's, it's literally a home that you're building to live in once you're older. And, and, you know, you, I've got friends now that are out of the game that we talk to and laugh with, man. And, you know, we're always reminiscing, man. But, you know, we can never get to the point where we think that, man, you know, this football thing is everything. Because yeah. it's really not. It's literally a blip on the radar of life, man, when you get out of it. Like you and I, like, think about it, man. You played nine years. Like, that's a long career when you put it up against the average of 2.5, which it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? But nine years? What's the life expectancy? You know what I mean? Like literally nine years playing pro sports is literally so, so, so insignificant. Oh yeah. yeah. So but you don't you don't realize it, man. You don't realize it when you're playing. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's it, man. Football needs you a lot more than you need it. And I think that uh people don't understand that sometimes and, and that's what that's what causes the hardship after if there is any. Yeah, they're all, yeah. Once you're when you're in it, you're focused on what you're doing and in it, and you don't think of the the big picture. And you no, know, there's no, man. way more to life than than no. just football, and so much more to live after after you're done playing. So, man, that's why I was all so excited to get to get on this podcast, man. Because you know, yeah. I think that you know the more people hear this, man, you know, the more people they hear the guys that you're connecting with, like Kerry Joseph and those guys, like, man. Yeah, yeah, like, oof, you can find that sweet spot, man, but. You know, it's like you're gonna have to do the looking, man. No one's gonna like. We're so used to giving, getting our schedule. You know, hey, be on the bus at 5:30. Yeah. You know, we're on the plane at 6:30. Plane lands at 7:31. We're on the bus. We'll be at walkthrough by by 7 7. Uh, you know, 7:54. Yeah. Be out and walk through by 8:10. We're so used to having someone else give our schedule. We have to realize, that, you know, once we're out, man, no one's there to hand us our schedule. We got to create it ourselves, man. Exactly. It's all on us after that, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, Luke. It's been it's been awesome. Thank you so much for for coming on the show. It's been a been a pleasure with uh, interviewing you and, and going through your your football uh, journey and your football career. And um, I just want to say thanks again. And um, yeah, if there's any um, social media, I know that you have a Twitter and Instagram accounts. If you want to share, if anyone wants to contact you, yeah, man. You. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, at Luke Mall ninety five on Twitter and uh, at Luke Mall L U C M U L L on on Instagram. Okay. And that's about it, man. And I follow, I follow your podcast now and everything. So, man, uh, we'll keep in touch. All right, that sounds great. All right, brother. All right, Luke. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll keep in touch. All right, man. Peace. All right, take care. Thank you for listening to After the Gridiron. If you're a fan of the show, please make sure you subscribe to the show and also leave a rating and review. By doing that, you also help spread the word about the podcast and assist others in finding the show so more people can enjoy this great content. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the links to those being found on the website. Your support is very much appreciated. Also, please visit the resources page on the website for links to our sponsors and affiliates. Your support helps to keep the show running. So go to www dot at gridiron dot com slash resources to check them out thanks again for listening and i'll see you when we kick off our next episode